Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to another tutorial in Dynamics. This time we're going to be working on end cloth, but an actual dress. Uh, you can see my previous tutorials about end cloth when it comes to a flag and a couple of other pieces, but uh, this one's going to be a little bit more complicated because we are going to be simulating a dress, a silky dress. So right now I have a dress and you'll notice that my timeline goes to negative 120 around, and let me just select her geometry, around negative 80, you're going to see that she slowly starts to pose to her walking stance and then she takes off. Yes, she is wearing clothes. So there she is walking, walking, walking. Perfect. And then she's her animation stops around 50. So over here, I'm going to change this to 50 because I don't need to simulate anything past that. And the reason why I'm doing this is because usually when we render something and animate something, we start off at zero and then go on from here. But when we're going to simulate a dress or any type of outfit, we need to make sure that the character is on a T-pose so we can start with the simulation and then eventually get the character, the dress or the outfit to eventually follow the body and then go with the clothes. All right, so let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is zoom in. And again, I'm assuming you've seen my previous tutorial, so please make sure you look at uh, the end cloth tutorial. So I, I'm going to go a little bit faster. All right, let's go to FX. Let's go to end cloth, create end cloth, and then grab the character. We're going to do end cloth, create passive collider. Again, we started at negative 20 and we're going to press play. And you're going to notice that nothing happens. But once we go to around zero, when the animation happens, the simulation suddenly catches on and then you'll notice that things are moving. And the reason why is because by default, end cloth starts at frame zero. So what we need to do is go into the end nucleus. So we have a nucleus, we have the cloth, and then we have the rigid body. So we're going to go to the nucleus and we're going to scroll down until we see time attributes. And you'll notice that right now the current frame is at 23, but I really wanted to start at negative 120. So that's exactly what I'm going to type in. I'm going to type in negative 120. So now when I press play, you're going to see the dress actually starts to simulate. And now we have a very elastic looking dress that is not holding on at all, but at least it's sort of draping. It's doing a lot of bouncing as you can see. And there we go. Now let's talk about simulation. You need to make sure that your, when you right click your playback speed is play every frame max real time. You're trying to see you need to make sure that you play every frame. This is really important because the way simulations work is that it goes from one frame to the next to the next, so it calculates. So if I try to bounce around like this, it doesn't really know what to do. It has to start at a value and then calculate forward. So one of the things that we can do is called caching because this isn't really going to help us if we're trying to, you know, watch this animation or the cloth. So what we're going to do over here is we're going to cache. So up here at the top, there's an end cache, create new cache, end object, and then we're going to go to the options. Now it's really important that you have set your project. I have a file called end cloth. So file set project. I have a section called 3d projects and then a bunch of projects that I've been working on or worked on in the past. And then I see end cloth. That's my folder set. And this is going to tell me where the cache is going to be located. So here we are, 3D projects, end cloth. And then you'll notice that we have a cache. Then we have an end cache. And then we have fluids, which we're not doing fluids. We're doing cloth. So end cache, create end cache or new cache, end object, which is our dress. Make sure you have your dress selected. Go to the options. And this is what it's going to be called. End cache, calico, what, this is the title of the scene. And then I'm going to just call this dress cache. Everything else can remain the same. And then I'm going to click on create. So what's going to happen is that it's going to start creating a fancy folder. And in here, you're going to see a cache. This is every single frame being calculated in a file called MCX, which has information about the vertices and where it's located. 
which is great because, oh, I spelled dress wrong, uh, because we really need to see how the dress is going to work. So I'm going to let it do its thing for a second, and then I'm going to press escape because at this point it's pretty, pretty pointless. And by pressing escape on your keyboard, it's going to stop the simulation. All right, it finally took. So now I can actually rewind and go back, rewind and take a look at things and see if, if the actions that are, are making are, are going to make a difference. So right now, so we're going to be doing a lot of caching, so keep that in mind. That's, that's something that we're going to have to do. Okay, the dress. So right now, one of the biggest problems is that it's very, very bouncy. Right, so we're going to take a look at the dress and let's take a look at the end cloth shape. And over here we have self collide, collide, all that stuff. And self collision flags, we want to make sure that we choose vertex face. It just means that it's going to calculate the vertices and the faces as well. We just want to make sure that it calculates everything so it gives us the most accurate look. The second thing you'll notice is that when I get close to the character, you'll notice that the dress isn't really touching the character. And if you've seen my previous tutorials, it'll tell you because of thickness. Right now, the thickness is 0.32, which sounds really small, but that's actually pretty large space in, especially with this particular character. So what I'm going to do is change this to 0.00. .00 five and don't forget that the passive also has a thickness so we'll go to 0 0.005 as well and I also like to increase the friction so I'm going to increase my friction to let's say 10 and the same thing for the dress so don't forget that the dress and the passive collider which is the, the character they both have attributes that affect each other so it's really important that you play with those all right now if we want to see what happens we're going to have to rewind Go to end cache, create new cache, end object. Then it's going to ask you, do you want to add and blend? No, I want to replace. And then I'm going to click on replace existing. So you can see that already it's acting a little bit better. It's really starting to drape, but at least it's kind of holding on. And then it's starting to slide off, but at least it's better. Not much better, but at least it's getting better. But you'll see that the dress, and I'm going to press escape because I don't need to really see the simulation forever. If it reads it, which is not for whatever reason, I guess I just have to watch it simulate. I am pressing escape and it's not doing it. Okay, there we go. So, so you can see that it's doing a little bit better. It's still very bouncy and, but the biggest thing to look at is actually right there. So I don't want it to be touching as long as it gets the idea that it's really close, that should be enough. So that's a good start. And again, we cache so we can see the effect and rewind and play. Cool. All right, so let's talk about cloth dynamics. So we're going to st we're still looking at the dress geo. We're looking at the shape and we're going to open up the dynamic properties. And there is something called the stretch resistance and the compression resistance. So that basically means how much of the shape should it uh, uh, the dynamic should bounce. Should it bounce a lot? Should it really stretch like uh, something really stretchy. I can't think of anything right now. Or do you want it to really kind of keep its shape? So I'm actually going to increase this to 140, and then I'm going to well, I'm going to do this to 120, and this one's going to be 120 as well. So this is going to help keep the shape of the dress so it's not so stretchy. So again, I like to see what this looks like. So I'm going to cash it out, and let's take a look. So already I'm liking the way the dress is folding around her body. Um, we're still having some issues with the uh, strap staying. Um, the friction is kind of helping and the thickness is kind of helping it keeping it on, but not too much. But I'm going to go ahead and escape this because we don't need to see all of that. And to be fair, I just want to see it draping on her probably up to negative 55. So I'm just going to change this value here to negative 55. So it only simulates until that space. All right, let's see what that looks like. So I like the way the dress is draping around her. I like the fact that it's kind of folding around her versus here, which is all puffy and it's looking kind of nice. So I'm looking for a silky kind of chiffon like dress. All right, we're moving ahead. 
So if we wanted to make it look a little bit, there's a, a little bit silkier. There's a lot of things that you guys can play around with, we can play around with. And as much as I love to playing around with everything, it's it's up to you to go ahead and explore all these attributes. I'm just going to show you the basics of how to start simulating outfits so that you can kind of get go from there. So let's talk about mass. Mass is actually very important when it comes to material. Uh, as you know, all materials are different. Denim versus chiffon, all that stuff. So I'm going to change my mass to around 0.8, something like that. So that's going to make it a little bit silkier. So again, if you really want to see the effect, you can just go ahead and replace this new cache and you can see that it's starting to fold a little bit nicer. It's really wrapping around the character really well. And then of course we still have that issue of it sliding off uh, and then we'll go from there. Cool. So let me go over here and we can see that it's starting to look really nice. Very pretty. Okay, so do we really want to, every single time we make a change, do we really want it to simulate all the way to 120 and do its thing until it finally settles around 90? And then it goes from there. So we, it would be great if somehow we can tell Maya to, hey, you know what? You can skip all of these frames and just start at negative 90. And that's exactly what I'm going to be showing you next. So we're going to be using the solver up here. There's a field solver. And what we're going to do is go to field solver, initial state, relax initial state, and then go to the options. It's going to ask you the step. What step do you want? So we wanted to go 30 steps into the simulation. So we're going to say relax initial state. So what that means is that it's going to take a look at this initial state and then it's going to basically start there. But we also want to make sure that it compresses and keeps some of the compression and, and stretching us. So we're going to go into end mesh or end cloth. We're going to go to rest shape and then set rest, set rest to start shape. Now, not much is going to happen, but again, we actually need to cache. So end cache, create new cache, end object, replace, replace existing. And you'll notice right away that in 120, it now starts at the dress all nice and relaxed. And then the simulation continues. So that's exactly what we want. We actually want the simulation to start at that particular dress. So here's our negative 120. So now when we rewind to negative 120, it now stays where it's supposed to be originally. Now what I'm going to do next is go back into my nucleus and tell it like, hey, don't start at 120. Let's go ahead and start at negative 90. So when I go to end cache, create in cache, helps if I select a cloth, end cache, create in class, replace, replace. It won't do anything. It won't do any caching until it hits negative 90 and then the animation starts or the simulation starts. So that's going to be helpful. Now I can actually just go ahead and tell it start at negative 90. I'm going to go ahead and change this to negative 90. And when I rewind to negative 90, the dress is where it's located. Okay. Now that we are starting here, how do we do, how do we work with the animation? So I believe, I think the animation stops at 45. So if I go through here and she starts to walk, the dress no longer sticks to her. So let's just take a look at it, at the dress, just the way it is with what the attributes we currently have. It's always kind of fun to watch. So we're going to go ahead and replace all of this. It's going to calculate negative 90. She's going to start posing slowly because they, the dress needs to kind of catch up with the geometry and the movement slowly. And then once it hits zero, she's going to take off. And the dress, it's doing her, its thing. It's actually doing pretty well around the body, but clearly we're having some issues with the top. But again, this is kind of like a work in progress, but we're getting there. It's definitely looking better than what it did before. There we go. All right, I think that's a good place to stop. Uh, so far, we have created our end cloth, our passive, and we've also played around with some of the attributes. And we, uh, we basically have it fitted onto our character really well. So the next tutorial is about the simulation when she starts to walk. We're going to be talking about how to fix those straps, how to improve the quality of the simulation, and then also how to improve the overall appearance of the 
material itself. So there's a lot to cover and looking forward to showing it to you. So in the meanwhile, please like and share. If you feel that this tutorial is helpful for anyone, I would love it if you could share it with your friends and classmates. Um, otherwise, please subscribe to my channel and take a look at academicphoenixplus.com where you can find free tutorials, free ebook, free 3D models, all sorts of free stuff just for you. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com and please uh, comment below and let me know what you think about this uh, tutorial and all the other tutorials. So thank you again for watching and I will see you next time.